Fui sentado. Thank you very much, uh, Double B, for your very kind introduction. I don't know your full name, but anyway, Double B will suffice. Let me just uh, greet uh, my fraternity brother, Yusek uh, Kitain. Boy, how are you? Are you still here? And I'd like to greet, of course, the chairman and administrator of Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. I'm very happy. Uh, the uh, title and position is back. Uh, uh, let me greet Attorney Ami Aishma. Major General Reyes, uh, my uh, good friend and uh, fellow co worker who, worked, who started this uh, uh, facility, especially with our efforts to get the World Bank to uh, work with us, Babe Simpson. Give them a big hand. I also want to take particular. I notice to uh, to uh, uh, our uh, volunteers, uh, original, Sila Iki Reyes, Sila Don Dialipala, Jojo Mercado, Sila Ami, uh, Rio Resencio, uh, Peanuts, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Chairman Payumo is here. Uh, Grace, uh, Grace uh, over there, uh, and of course, uh, Don Dialipala, Manny Quijano. Why don't you sit down beside Jojo so that you can continue the rivalry? Amongst the two of you, and I'm being polite when I say rivalry. I was going to say animosity, but then that's all right. Uh, of course, uh, Mrs. Aristoteles is here. Uh, Lisa Zavaya and my good friend, uh, uh, my gosh, I cannot remember everybody. Uh, Betty Fielder. There you go. Betty, can you sign up, please? Dara Paglinawan, Makoy Pernia, and of course, uh, the uh, Jay Harandoni, Dona Evidente, and many others are here. I, uh, I thought uh, Makoy is there, uh, uh, Louis Pawid. And, uh, you're fired. I want you to know that I fired this guy a million and a half times. And he's still around. Uh, and of course, all our folks here, I thought I'd mention some of the young guys who started with me here. Uh, took a look, leave of faith. But I wish I could talk to all the Barikatan ladies. And uh, I'm glad that uh, I wasn't here this morning. I deliberately did not want to go. I did not want to feel the pain again. But nonetheless, uh, let me just uh, say a few good words about Mercy Washington. Where's Mercy? I understand you're now a lieutenant. And uh, I understand you gave a very good speech this morning. And of course, all the Malikatan ladies uh, who work here, Tante Rosario is not a lady, but uh, is one of those who help us out also. And uh, uh, the many, many thousands who helped us put Subic together after the American slam. You know, uh, I really do, do not have a prepared text because I never do have a prepared text when I speak. You know that. I'd like to speak from the heart, as usual. And uh, let me just say that, uh, wow, I didn't think that we'd make it after 25 years. There have been many twists and turns, a lot of sufferings, and by the way, uh, a lot of uh, successes. 
And let me just also recognize some of the people from Longobor here. Uh, Lisa Zabalia over there, who's still with me. And uh, many others, uh, some of the business women are here. I don't know if, uh, can all, you all stand up? I cannot remember all your names. Please, all the, uh, all the people who help from Longobor, please stand up. Are you here? Jerry Vida, especially Jerry Vida. These are the people who did a lot of heavy lifting during those days. Just imagine, just imagine about this time the Bellowood was about to leave. And that is the helicopter carrier, which was at that time at the pier in Huey Point. And uh, we had just struck down America's colors and lifted the Philippine colors that signified the last vestige of American territory or American foreign held territory in the Philippines. And just imagine the fear that at that time the struggle to create a structure, a legal structure called initially the Basis Conversion Authority and uh, we have had to amend it at the last moment on second reading. It was already on second reading, and we had to go with all the volunteers. And I remember many of them. Uh, you know, uh, Bad Boy Bada was one of them. Uh, you remember Bad Boy Bada? We always called him Bad Boy Bada because he was our enforcer. He was the guy that ran after all the illegal loggers, ran after all those crawling in the jungle trying to do little things that uh, could hurt the pre -board. And I remember him, I called him Bad Boy Bada, not because he was a bad man, but he was a, a really firm guy who made sure that we were all safe and that the integrity of the place was maintained. The one thing that I want to keep in mind is that that was what we were fighting for initially. The ability to come in, a military facility that had a lot of stuff in here that was turned over to us and the ability to keep honest, not to lose anything and to make sure that we could continue the march from a military base, from a bastion of military power to at that time we were hoping for a commercial uh, initiative that would turn the tide of cycle of disaster and poverty caused by, for example, by Mount Pinatubo and the sudden withdrawal of bases. We were successful because of the many people, some of them I don't want to think as faceless. I see the faces in my mind all the time. And I find it a struggle to just remember without shedding a tear in my heart. Just this afternoon or this morning, on the way here on the helicopter, I thought I was going to cry just thinking of all the people who sacrifice themselves. Those who really, really work hard without pay. And a lot of people, of course, at that time were incredulous about it. They didn't think that people would come here and work without pay and put their future in the line and put their sacrifice as their capital in the belief that we could have or make the future. I remember I would coax everybody not to fear the future, but to make the future their friend. And indeed we did. Indeed we did. Many of them have gone on. Many barangay captains brought the volunteers and took over Kalaya, took over QB Point, took over Naval Magazine. And they were joined later on by others who they discovered it was not just fun, but an honor to volunteer. I remember nearing Christmas when we promised that we would have a free port that can sell duty-free goods here. As you know, we were Filipinos looking from the outside, looking in. And we saw the uh, many, many things that America had that most Filipinos did not have in their homes. I used to tell the Americans, you keep tempting my countrymen who are poor, 
by being so conspicuously consumptive. They would throw their hoses, their bicycles, and a lot, a lot of our young people would look from the barricades and see how much they had. They would throw food. I remember when I was a little boy, very, very young boy, bare feet, with my friends who were not so well endowed with parents who worked hard and were able to send their kids to school. We had a piggery in Santa Rita at that time. It was still an American naval reservation. I never ceased to wonder at the so much uh, uh, wealth that America had. They would throw from their mess hall apples, oranges that have not even been bitten, trays, coffee mugs, and they just put it on the slop can. And my father would get them because we had the contract to get the slop, so to speak. And when the pickup of ours arrived at our piggery, I thought you would not believe this. My friends, some of them snot filled noses would rush, and I would be with them, and we'd stick our hand, and out would come an apple, an orange, or a mug, and we would quickly run to the river, wash it from the current, and eat apples, perhaps. Knock on wood, I have not gotten sick because I acquired enough germs uh, doing that. But that was what I thought about America at that time. And uh, I thought that so much wealth, so much so that when I was mayor, I tried to analyze why there were so much, so many people going in. And the Americans would complain that they would lose a bicycle, they would lose equipment, and we put a stop to all that uh, by firmness and by consultation with the people, especially in Kabbalah, and that stopped. And when we took over this facility, the worry was we would be swamped as Clark was with a lot of people who would come in and take stuff out from the beach. So the first battle was a battle of integrity, a battle against ourselves to make sure